Good evening and welcome to the special Data Science Nigeria Masterclass on building a world-class career in data science, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and all the associated or related disciplines. My name is Olubaya Adekombi. I lead Data Science Nigeria nonprofit. It's a great pleasure for me to host you this evening uh, to share thoughts, learn together, and share perspectives on what makes data science, AI, such a big deal. We're going to explore the learning paths, all the developmental options that exist, uh, the hypes, of course, the risk, the pathways of growth, roadmap for sustained relevance, and continuous capacity building for yourself, and of course, the benefit to the larger society. So, you are welcome. So how are you doing? And hope you are keeping safe and you're observing all the social distancing and the hygienic rules as we navigate our path uh, through these interesting times with COVID-19. As the saying goes, tough times never last, but tough people do. Let's be strong and let's maximize the season of lockdown or perhaps the restricted movement that will now start uh, from, that has started from now uh, for self-reflection, uh, career enhancement, and of course, reinvention of ourselves. And I believe that this learning session, I uh, will explore multiple opportunities uh, within the domain of data science, and of course, guide you to develop your own personal template on your own path of unique capacity uh, building uh, via a roadmap that will, of course, uh, be relevant for your medium, and long term. So in terms of our agenda today, uh, this is our agenda for today. Um, so for today, basically, uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, these key points. Uh, we're going to look at the concept of career. I think we need to understand what it means as it relates to data science, AI. Uh, we're going to look at some of the errors and the myth out there uh, so that we're able to just oppose uh, fact, myths, and reality, and then we can make the right decisions. We're going to look at how to plan our career in this evolving, complex, ever-evolving, multidisciplinary space, how to find where you belong, and how we use my own personal learning. And of course, we're going to rely a lot on a lot of evidence-based facts, a lot of researches that have been done to profile and define uh, the data science uh, field so that each of us uh, can make effort to find where we belong. And I believe that after that, we can ask questions of how to start. So let's go straight to the agenda. So the first thing on the agenda is to talk about the concept of career. This for me is very important that uh, uh, this conversation is properly situated. That is not another hype or another motivational engagement. Uh, data analytics, data science is beyond just giving you, you know, short-term sugar and boost you up for a moment. Uh, it takes some deeper reflective thinking, and that's why I, I'm going to uh, go a step into understanding what career means uh, by taking a journey into the root uh, uh, meaning of the word, you know, uh, so that we're able to appreciate the context of my, decision, uh, my discussion today and why we must build a career instead of just finding a job or just being excited or just being motivated. Um, so if you look at the etymology, etymology of the word career, uh, it's a word that has transversed time and has evolved in meaning uh, from French, Italian, and Latin. Um, um, its, uh, its root is as early as the uh, 16th century, as early as 1530s. Uh, its actual meaning, the original root meaning, if you look at the chart above that traces the different expression of the name uh, to the original format and the various adaptations that happened over time, indicates that career means a running object that is moving usually at full speed, and at the same time, it can also mean a course, a definite path towards a destination. So what like race course and even chariots are associated with the extensions of his meaning. So it denotes the concept of focus, momentum, energy, direction, purpose, arriving at a place. So when we apply this in regards to our conversation on AI today or data science, build up career building, we're talking about you 
finding your best path and moving in that path with deep conviction, with energy, with focus, so that you're able to arrive your destination full of inner fulfillment, and that is where you find the best version of yourself. This is not uh, about opportunistic job change. You know, it's about defining your sphere of sustainable impact. It's not a flash in the pan discussion. It's about you know, an energetic enablement like a chariot on a path to reaching its destination. It's beyond a certificate that I flaunt. It's about skills that make impact. It's about being very clear about my point of departure and my point of arrival. So it's beyond getting a job, essentially. So the conversation we're going to be having today, I will derive its expression and depth of meaning uh, from the root word career uh, of career as I uh, attempted to clarify. So today's conversation is not about job. No, it's not about job. It's about building career. Looking for job is easy thing to do, but building career uh, is more long lasting, is more inclusive, is more robust. And it's more genuine because it takes you to look inward. Job is generally short term. Career is long term. A job gives you money. It pays the, you know, gives you money and salary and raise and all that. But career gives you meaning. It gives you experience. It gives you learning. And it gives you fulfillment. You know, job may just be a daily routine. I wake up, go to work, come back. But career is a daily journey of progress self-evolution, self-reinvention, and of course, this leads to self-actualization. So good careers align with your values and help you live what you are going to be. It catalyzes your reason for being. You know, it becomes something you enjoy and not just something you have to do because you've got no option. You know, a job comes with stress uh, because we are, we are just, we're just working hard for something you don't care about. But career is working hard for something you love. And this is where passion comes in. And like a popular quote says, it's a beautiful thing when a career and passion comes together. So I think it's important we build this foundation as we deep dive into our conversation this evening. So I also see career, if you look at this quote uh, by Terry Mante, um, says a career is not just about earning an income, is about pursuing the essence of your life. Wow, that is deep. For me as a person, I also see career from a sense of higher purpose, where everything I do helps me to fulfill the purpose of my maker and to make the world a better place for the master architect who has created all things. Uh, with due respect to people of other religious convictions, uh, my re my, by reason of my faith in Christ Jesus, I believe I'm created for a purpose, so there's an essence to my life, and I'm only amplified and fulfilled if I tread on that path with deep sense of conviction, value, and impact. And I want to believe that some of you will share the same sentiment. Now, with that understanding, work is not just to earn a living or to take care of yourself, your family, or to build an empire. You know, it's about touching others. It's about making a difference. It's about solving problems. It's about changing the world for good. And like I said before, it's about glorifying your maker. So with that understanding, finding a career must be seen as a lifelong fulfillment. You recall when we started, it's a pathway, it's like a chariot or the choosing space of fulfillment. So career is not just a random decision that is made. It's actually finding your calling. You know, so it's beyond money. It's about finding your calling and aligning your passion and your calling to get you to your destination with that energy, with that right mindset, right sense of purpose, right sense of being, and right sense of living. So with this backdrop, you will agree with me that each person should be responsible for his or her career. It's your choosing part of fulfillment. Hence, it cannot be delegated to a child or to somebody else to decide what becomes of your life. It is very worrisome today that so many people are just like football, being played between the park men, being played here and there. And so therefore they are frustrated, they are tired, they are waiting for next promotion, they are waiting for next vacancies, having spent so many years doing the same thing that they do not like, 
you know, and this is because you have failed to be the CEO of your career. Taking CEO of your career means you are in charge. You know where you are, you know your key milestones, and you know when you have arrived at your destination. So which means a CEO of a company will do, you must take a stock of your career balance sheet, you must see the loss and the profit, what are the assets that uniquely profile me? What are the liabilities that put me at, at risk? You must do your SWOT analysis. What is my strength? What are my weaknesses? What are my opportunities? And what are my threats? You know, because those are the things that allow you to make bold decisions to own your future by finding yourself. You can't be in the maze of eight to five and not chart your own path like an energetic chariot set for a destination. Friends, this is beyond money. This is about fulfillment and impact, and that's what makes you the CEO of your career limited for your career.com. Okay. So having established that, I think we can we have provided the right foundation. So clearly, the kind of people that I'm speaking to this evening can see themselves that oh, this is not about quick fix, this is not about the next magic uh, to becoming something. This is about finding a path that makes me fulfilled, that makes me create long-lasting, timeless impact, that makes me get fulfilled and make uh, the desired impact. So I've been established that we go straight to the second agenda today. So why should I be excited about data science? I think you should be. If we look at this uh, statistics uh, from the US-based Glassdoor, which is one of the world's leading uh, job and equity website, um, the published uh, report uh, in January 2019, uh, which validated the fact that data science remains or ranks number one best job in the US for 2019. And the way this is determined, I think it's important we understand uh, the way this logic is done uh, by Glassdoor. Uh, uh, Glassdoor combines um, uh, three criteria in determining the best jobs. Uh, they, they look at, and it's weighted. Uh, so we look at uh, earning potential uh, by looking at median annual base salary. They look at overall job satisfaction rating and number of job openings. So if you go back to the vision of career, career is not just about money, uh, it's also about fulfillment. So they also look at job satisfaction. So anything that gives you good money gets you satisfied and there are so many options and ranks number one uh, should be something you should be excited and be interested in looking at. And that's what their research has shown. And you can read more about that uh, looking at the hyperlink below. Uh, this uh, presentation has relied a lot on so many references, and the references have been provided. So if you, have, if you get uh, the PowerPoint slide, just click the hyperlinks uh, to be able to get uh, the full information and the full detail. Interestingly, uh, all the sources of data that we've seen has actually shown that data science as a profession has been number one best job in the US for the fourth year in a row, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. So, and it's based on that, that consistency, I need to suggest to us the reason why you and I should take interest in understanding why this is so. Uh, this is another data source uh, from ZNet that further validate this, that even on LinkedIn, uh, it dominates uh, emerging job ranking. Uh, AI particularly, having 74% hiring growth in the past four years. And of course, with the other extended role within the broader domain. So there's a lot uh, to be excited about and uh, why so many people should be interested in asking the question, what is the need for me uh, to be a data scientist? Now, let's come to this popular, you know, quote that a lot of people must have heard about, data scientists, the sexiest job of the 21st century. Uh, it's, um, it's an article that was published in the October 2012, 2012 uh, issue of uh, Harvard Business Review uh, by uh, Thomas Davenport and uh, DJ Patel. Uh, they introduced to us, the article introduced to us a special bit of people who should be seen as, you know, special competencies, which is, is an hybridization of data hacker, analyst, communicator, and yet trusted advisor. 
So the, com the combination of what they saw at that time and they defined is extremely powerful and rare. Hence, we can understand the premium value as we place on data scientists. And of course, the consequence, uh, popularity, interest, hype, and of course, the evolving saving the charm that we are seeing in that space. So there are so many reasons why you should be interested in unpacking what is the need to be a data scientist or a data analyst or a machine learning engineer or other extensions are within the broader domain. Interestingly, some people have taken it, taken it even further. There is not just the sexiest job of the 21st century, it can even go as far as the 22nd century because of the multiple layer and the domino effect of opportunity that creates in adding value to community and in defining the opportunity in businesses or in applications and research. And I do agree to that. So why does everyone want to be a data scientist now? That's another question uh, that has been raised. Uh, because would there be a glut? Would there be oversupply? Are we going to get to a point where there are too many data scientists? People are saying, I don't need them anymore. Of course, like every career, uh, you continuously reinvent uh, yourself by upskilling, upscaling, and enhancing your skill set as the career path evolves, as, 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 as new things you know, come, uh, you know, come on your way, you augment it, you add more to it, and you make it even much better. So these are concerns that we raise. I'm just trying to build foundation around some of the general excitement uh, questions that people are raising, you know, would there be a point where the market will be saturated? Uh, clearly, it will never be saturated, but as much as you know what you want to do, you're continuously building yourself, learning, relearning, unlearning, and uh, moving on that part of continuous self-development. Of course, more question, would there be a talent bubble? Like I've said before, it does not appear that there'll be an issue with the supply and demand for as much as you have the base foundational skill and you are on the right path. You are not a flash in the pan. You are not an opportunist uh, kind, uh, job seeker. You are a career builder. Then you are adaptable uh, to continuous self uh, uh, development by building on the foundational skill set of being relevant. So, having established those good stories, those exciting stories, we also know that there are counter arguments on the opportunities presented by data science as a career path. So these are some of the arguments. We don't need everyone to be a data scientist. Some people think so, that we don't need everyone to be a data scientist. And this may be valid, is an argument. Like what I'm trying to do is to just oppose, uh, put the positive and the negative side by side, so that in making your decision, uh, if this is a path you really want to tread in, you're able to consider the pros and the cons, and you are convinced and persuaded like a chariot. Uh, indeed, you can put all your momentum on this path and give it all it takes. And then somebody wrote 21 reasons why you should not become a data scientist. Well, is that depressing? Is that worrisome? Of course, the person has a point that it can be so demanding, it can be so challenging, it takes you out of your comfort zone, you do much more than you normally do. You have to build multidisciplinary skill, sometimes you have to learn domain knowledge, you have to refine your mathematics, your statistics, you keep learning, and because it's an ever-evolving dynamic field, you are learning as you are working every day. And then Inc. Doc said, whatever you do, don't hire a data scientist, and here's why. This, uh, this paper speaks to the issue of so many buzzwords. Who are buzzwords? Guys who know how to throw buzzwords. They talk about oh, model, algorithm, deep learning, you know, back propagation, weights, biases. You know, they talk about the tools, big ML, Keras, TensorFlow. They just speak all the languages. You see their CVs, 30 pages CVs, 15 pages CVs. And you give them a simple data set. And you help us build a simple regression model to predict whether customer A will go or not. For two weeks, they're still trying to understand what you're giving to them. So, of course, the fact that there are so many uh, buzzwords who have created a wrong impression, uh, this, paper, uh, this article uh, sits differently. 
And of course, there's another viewpoint from uh, the fact that some data scientists are leaving their jobs, they're looking for new jobs. It's, but this is talking about frustrations of data scientists. And if you read through this article, it's talking about the fact that every day is a new challenge. What you finished yesterday will be different from what you are going to face the next day. So people who are used to monotony, predictability, linear way of thinking will find it very difficult because every day comes with new challenges. So you're continuously seeking new approaches, new methodology, methodologies to solve new problems facing you every day. But even with the negatives, the facts still remain positive. If we weigh them side by side, we can make some informed conclusion, uh, even though it's agreeable, that data science is a career worth spending your time to navigate and make decisions whether it's something you're going to give a deep dive and build your career path along it. Forbes article 2019, data scientist leads 50 best jobs in the US. Um, and of course, uh, based on KD Nuggets, this has happened for three years. I've spoken about this before. I'm just relating that fact. Now, beyond the fact that data science has been very impactful for you as a person in building your career, there's a social dimension to it. And it's important we see the multiplier effect of data science beyond you as a person building the skill to understanding it as a critical basis for sustainable national competitiveness. I'll be referencing a research report by Accenture on data skill for the future, where you know uh, data science AI was positioned as ultimate game changer for nation competitiveness, where we're going to get to a point where we're, we're going to see new terms like AI developed nation, AI developing nation, AI underdeveloped nation, because there will be a strong correlation between development of nation and the adoption, application of AI in how value is created in those countries. So it speaks to our countries with leverage AI to scale up productivity, innovate, especially within the broader fourth industrial revolution. And of course, a lot of countries are taking this as a national agenda. Uh, at least I know countries like Canada, China, France, Germany, India, and even Kenya have all articulated uh, their national AI strategy, where AI has been defined with a clear roadmap as a way to drive national gross domestic product. I'll speak more to that uh, in my next uh, slide. So if I pick China, for example, if you look at what China did uh, or how China managed COVID-19 frontally, uh, how, and, and how they were able to flatten the curve, uh, leveraging data and AI, in, multi, in multiple domains of application, uh, from contract tracing, uh, community surveillance, risk prediction, even medical diagnosis of scaling uh, image analysis, radiological image analysis, and even the way robotics were, uh, were used to manage individuals who are in isolation center. You can see how nations are positioning themselves at leverage AI for value creation. So, Still building on that, um, uh, there, 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 there are sufficient reports uh, that are pushing the fact that data is now becoming uh, another factor of production. I'm sure some of us will remember secondary school economics, uh, factors of production, uh, land, labor, entrepreneurship, and all that. Data is now being seen as one of the factors of production. So hence, it will redefine business practice and governance it has direct impact on business contribution to broader economy because when companies create more value, they pay more tax, and that staff will also pay more tax, uh, and consumption will definitely increase, and government will have enough money to invest in infrastructure and social welfare, and then that social system continue in a cycle of multiplier effect, and that is what is shown in the Nesta report published in the UK on what is called the skills of the data wars. Data wars, you know. I'm sure you all remember your elementary uh, science where we talk about carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores, which were defined by what, uh, what they eat. You know, uh, I, I recall herbivores eat herbs, uh, carnivores is meat eaters, and then uh, the omnivores eat both uh, uh, meat and, uh, and herbs. So when we talk about data vores, these are businesses that 
their survival data, you know. Uh, and that, because of the fact that we're going to have many data vaults as companies, even as nations, where every decision is data-driven end-to-end. Uh, so we need to start building the skill uh, for that future, both from governance and also from business perspectives. And you can link, and you can click the link to read more about this. These are just justification that beyond the opportunity created by data science from an individual perspective, there's so many layers of social skill. And then if we come to Sub-Saharan Africa, a recent report by IFC uh, indicates very convincingly that um, over 230 million jobs uh, will require digital skills by 2030. That's just in, in, in few years to come. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, as uh, Microsoft for Africa has shown uh, in this tweet. So you might just want to click and see. Of course, data science, AI will fall under digital skill. And of course, will represent some of the new jobs of the future. Okay, and then this very exciting report uh, published by PwC, it's uh, on its uh, AI impact index paper. It's such an amazing uh, report uh, where it made an attempt to size you know, the value of the AI market. It's such a great report uh, that you need to read. Uh, the hyperlink is provided below. Uh, the report indicated the potential of AI to increase the worldwide uh, GDP, what's called gross domestic product by 14% by 2030, based on infusion or, or the ability to embed you know, AI into the global economy. And this would generate as much as 16 trillion US dollars you know, to, to, to the global economy. Uh, for those who, uh, uh, who may not be quite, uh, who may not understand the meaning of the word GDP, is the word gross domestic product and is a measure of the total monetary or market value of all the finished goods and services that are produced within a country in a given period of time. Oftentimes, it's measured in a year. So every, so it's a measure of productivity, you know, and that's why we are keen to see how can AI be embedded in all the uh, value drivers in the nation. For example, in Nigeria, our principal drivers, industry, services, and agriculture. So how do we embed AI in those spaces at high value? So, there's so much value, you know, that uh, AI is going to bring to the world. Uh, so the question is, do we have the right skill set? Do we have what it takes uh, to unlock the opportunity? Uh, if you are able to get this report and able to read through it, you will see that I spoke about eight key sectors where AI will make very huge impact. Healthcare, uh, financial services, retail, manufacturing energy, Okay, so having established the individual benefits of AI from career development and skill building, and the cascade effect in terms of socioeconomic impact of AI to gross domestic product and nation building, or even nation competitiveness, uh, we can safely say that everyone needs a form of data understanding. Of course, this comes at different degree as basic intermediate or maybe a beginner or a learner or expert, at least we can safely say uh, that everyone needs a form of data science. And I will substantiate that with certain evidences of why, you know, a lot of people need to have a basic understanding of data. Let's look at this example. Um, uh, this is, uh, you know, a journalist trying to present, an, uh, you know, an electoral uh, data uh, which has a binary entity, yes and no, which we know that when you use percentage, it should sum up to 100%. But in this case, if we sum up this number, 52 plus 58 will give you 110. So somebody in this industry needs to learn this. Same for this uh, media presentation on Fox News, uh, 70 plus 63 plus uh, 60 would not add up to 100. A pie chart to sum up to 100. So everybody needs to understand as simple as data visualization and basic data analysis and how things like these are better communicated. Or perhaps if I look at this case, uh, what I would call the error of the y-axis, uh, this was recently presented also on Fox News as part of COVID-19 data. Uh, uh, you know, just to look at the trend analysis on day by day, uh, between March 18 and April 1, wanted to present a trend line. But if you look at the scale, uh, between 30 and 60, the next one is 90, then between 90 and 100, can you just check that? See the inconsistency. 
Prior to now, it was the scale, the variation between scales by three, uh, 30. And then it continues. Then if you now come here, 190 and 240, the difference is 50. And then you will now come to this one, 240 and 250. Of course, this data is wrongly presented. Or whatever this trend line says, it does not visually convey uh, the actual reality. So this means that people need to understand basic scaling, uh, data presentation, not necessarily the law of analysis. Um, so essentially, the argument here is everyone needs a form of data understanding, irrespective of the industry where you play. And that uh, takes me to you know, the fact that the old data story is, is multidisciplinary. Just like English language that we use in all forms of disciplines, in the same way, data science or AI is now applicable as an enabler or as a knowledge catalyst in other industry. I need to check out this website, Data Science uh, for Lawyers, where you see how data science is being effectively used uh, for legal network analysis. So that means that they can map law citation. You know, if a case was won, what were the references that were used? And they can link them together. Uh, you can compare documents uh, using natural language processing uh, in document A, document B. Uh, you can predict even the outcome of court cases as one of the possibilities by studying uh, patterns, uh, you know, you use patterns to predict the future. So, um, so we may, you know, simply say that perhaps everyone needs different adaptation of data, you know, skill set. And that's why it's important for everyone to understand uh, what are the options available so that you know where you best play, whether as a beginner or you're already in the field, you can calibrate yourself uh, for the right path. So let's just go into that. So to do this, uh, I'll be looking at five different uh, frame, uh, frameworks to explain different categorization of data applications or data users. And the intention is simple. I want you to be able to see where you fit. You know, where best can I play? Because if you know your unique path, you will definitely arrive earlier. You remember, we're talking about career, it's about a path, it's about a destination, it's about energy, it's about momentum. So when you are clear that this is the best path for me, out of so many other, out of so many other options, it becomes easier, it becomes very easy for you to be able to navigate your path among other options. So I'm going to look at five different frameworks, you know, that can help in this regard. So I'm going to start uh, with the number one, uh, which is the one uh, from McKinsey. Uh, it's called the uh, McKinsey Analytics Organization Structure. And this is essentially based on three types of skills. Number one is the business skill at the top. On the other side here is the technology skills. And then on the other side is the analytic skill. So it's the combination of these three that can determine where you fit in an analytics organization structure. So if I go into detail, so let's speak technology skill. If you are a core technology oriented person and there is no interception with business or analytics, you are likely going to be a data engineer whose job is likely building platforms, managing data, storage, you know, and, and making sure that you know, all the pipelines, uh, the value chains, in terms of data warehouse, uh, data lake are properly managed because it's purely technology-oriented skills. Or perhaps, uh, if you go a step further and you're able to combine business skill and, and, and technology skill, you'll be in this space called data architect. So which means that you understand the business needs, you know, it's like the work of a business analyst, you understand the business needs and you can make technology serve the business. You can find the interception between business needs and technology. So you will be like a data architect. And then if you come to data, uh, no, let's go to uh, analytics translator, uh, which is one of the unique uh, addition that came from this framework. You know, uh, this is a role that helps organization to truly unlock value. Uh, analysis translator, because it's someone on the business side who can help the business identify high impact analy analytic use cases and then translate the business need, data scientists, data engineer, and other tech expert expertise 
so that they can build an actionable analytic solution. So such a person has a mix of business knowledge, general technical fluency, and project management excellence. So that's why they are called analytics translator. They combine analytics skill with business skill. Uh, so this is another space. And of course, the other interception below here is data scientists, where you combine technology and analytics. This is very important to note that uh, if you, uh, an effective data scientist can manage his data to the extent that you have some basic skill set around data query, you understand uh, the architecture of the data, and you know how to use structural query language, SQL, bring your data to a usable platform, you can clean it, you can augment your data, and you can do all the analytics that is required. So you fall under the data scientist space according to the framework are proposed by McKinsey. Of course, there are those that are just called visualization analysts. So purely they have nothing to do with technology and no business skills. So uh, I would advise that you click these hyperlinks uh, to read this uh, even more to be able to situate yourself within the broader space. So we go to the second framework uh, that helps to define uh, the best path to trade in defining the scope. Now the path two is more from an academic perspective, it's based on academic construct. If you look at it very uh, carefully, uh, it's based on two research works, so you can actually check these articles out uh, so that you can also understand this uh, better. But certainly there are two constructs, it's predictive analytics and, pre and prescriptive analytics. And you can see everything there, probabilistic modeling, statistical analysis, mathematical programming simulation, logic-based model, evolutionary computation. They can either be on this side or on this side. But there are two dimensions there, experimental and theoretical. If you observe for those who have done data science 101, that normally we always start uh, with what we call descriptive analytics. This one does not include uh, descriptive analytics. Uh, descriptive analytic, analytics uses data aggregation uh, to provide insight into the past by answering a simple question, what has happened, you know? Five people bought a product, this is their agenda, this is how much they pay, very basic descriptive. But this particular construct starts from predictive, which is using statistical model and forecasting techniques to understand the future and answer the question of what could happen. So you predict the future, you forecast, you know, and you know that predictive analysis are very probabilistic in nature. You predict what will happen next. You know, so this is a strong domain, predictive analytics. And the second domain is prescriptive, you know. Uh, uh, so when you are saying you, are pres uh, you, are, uh, you, you, you prescribe, what you are trying to do is you are suggesting a range of actions and the potential outcomes of each action. So you are able to predict possible consequences based on a number of choice of actions. You know, it's like a like self-driving car, you know. Uh, it makes millions of calculations on every single trip so that it helps the car to decide when and where to turn, when to stop for a uh, street light, when to, turn, when, when to turn when it sees people, and when to slow down, speed up, and when to change lanes. Uh, the same decision you know, a human driver uh, will make behind the wheel. So this construct is based on that, that if you're academically oriented, these are the options available. Uh, and then we have uh, this uh, more... A metaphorical uh, conceptual archetype, uh, which is a very exciting research work uh, that was done uh, by uh, Professor Kim at UCLA, uh, University of California, Los Angeles Computer Science Department, uh, where she uh, worked with the Microsoft team, I think about 800 data scientists in Microsoft, and, uh, and these people have you know, different profiles, you know, in terms of PhD, masters, and degrees, and different years of experiences. Uh, to, so she was able to look at all that they do on a daily basis, and using clustering algorithm, uh, uh, Professor Kim and her team came up with nine groupings. But essentially, uh, from a personality or archetype uh, framework, data scientists or anyone that is in data analytics space can be boxed into any of this. Uh, the first is data preparer, as it sounds, their job is preparing data, so querying the data and doing some preliminary analysis. So SQL is very critical here. And then there's another level called data shaper. So they move a step further beyond 
you know, uh, uh, querying data. They also do some preliminary machine learning, you know, to find some features, uh, you know, do some analysis. Is this data complete and all that? So you save the data, you clean the data, and make it better. So you refine it. And then is the data analyzer. You know, they they, are, they don't have anything to do with preparing data or shaping data. The job is to make sense of the data. You know, so issues around classical statistics uh, comes in very strongly here, uh, where the job is to make sense of the data, uh, manipulate the data, and make predictions. Then there are platform builders. Platform builders, like it sounds, uh, you know, sounds very technical. You know, these guys are the guys who spend their time building platforms uh, and instrumenting code for the purposes of uh, collecting data. Uh, these are guys who also work in distributed systems, like Hadoop, for example, and they are like engineers, you know, essentially. And then we have the data evangelists who are like the middle man or middle woman. And in this case, data evangelists are very similar to analytic translators that we saw. So they, they preach the gospel of data by being the faithful intermediary who are able to tell the platform guys what the data preparer requires or the analyzer. And then there are inside actors, the people who act on the inside. You know, in terms of making sense of the data, interpreting it, contextualizing it, so that it's beyond us that I can see this going up. So what does it mean? You know, and then we have another group, uh, Moonlighters. Moonlighters combine software skill and you know data science skill. You know, there are a lot of software guys today who also are doing a form of data science. You know. A lot of software guys I know are also doing AI engineering. So, uh, so they are categorized under 50% more lighter or 20% more lighter. So they combine software engineering skill and data science skill. And then we have the last group, uh, the jack of all trade called the polymath. Uh, polymath can do virtually everything. They can pull their data, they can build a platform, they can shape the data, they can analyze the data, they can make insight, they can act as insight. Those are some basic software engineering skills. So where do you play? So you may want to read this research work that was done by Professor Kim, and that might help you for that situation yourself. Uh, this is the research work. I compares against another research work that was done uh, by Harris et al. Uh, in 2013. You know, uh, so it might be something you also want to look at. Then the fourth part, uh, which also is meant to help you situate yourself, is based on job families. Uh, this is a terminology that's very familiar to HR people. Essentially, this framework says there are two sides to data science practice. You are either in business intelligence or you are in artificial intelligence. Business intelligence is purely from a business application perspective. So, and it's basically about visualization, analysis, and extended business context application. It's as simple as that. Whereas the other side is more of the core high advanced analytics that goes beyond traditional numbers. Uh, this goes into analyzing large volume of data, text, images, and videos, and also building applications around that. Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the more a specialized field under machine learning called deep learning. It recognizes that there's a third distinct uh, space that is spread across, which is data engineering, ability to uh, manage your data, uh, either your data lake or your data warehouse and your data pipeline, you know, uh, you know, things that we call extract, transform and load, where you're able to bring your data into the, into the best format, where you use it. So this is another frame of reference. So you ask yourself, am I a data engineer? Am I a business intelligence person? Or am I an AI person? So it gives us two options, but we can actually see that three options, effectively three options where you can situate yourself. So I go to uh, part five uh, that has also been created. So these are based on various theories and uh, publications and uh, has been advanced in the last five years, based on researches that have been done on how data science as a practice has evolved. So this is based on the work from PwC and the skill-based, it categorizes skill and based on combination of skills, it can determine 
uh, whether you what you do is analytics enabled or it's actually a data science job. So it's basically based on two, and it categorizes it based on the color, uh, the thickness of the color. How red is the color? If the color is red, uh, it means that it's very advanced, and if it fades down to pinky to pink. Right, it's actually less. So, but it's actually based on the skills. So you start from the skills here. Yeah. Uh, do I have a domain knowledge? Uh, so for data analytics job, you will see that they must have strong domain knowledge. So that determines whether you are a data-driven uh, decision maker that's more like a business leader or you're a functional analyst. Then we have visualization, telling story with data. So in this regard, it's more around functional analyst that requires that and maybe data analyst there. And when it comes to data governance, people who do data enabled jobs do not require it. It's more a data engineers and data scientists that are required. That. And then if you go further down, you see skills like machine learning. Machine learning is not required by the people in the first bucket. That is analytics enabled job. But machine learning is actually required by data engineers and data scientists. So I would advise that you take time and also check this up. It's another way of asking yourself, am I a data engineer, am I a data scientist, am I a data analyst, am I a functional analyst, or am I a data-driven decision maker based on the degree of representation of each of the skill set in my everyday operation. So Having established that, uh, you know, I think the next thing to do uh, is to perhaps look at my own personal narrative or personal story in terms of how I play. Uh, the intention for the previous one is to broaden uh, your, your knowledge to understand different parts and different alternatives. I will still come back to close on that path uh, by streamlining this into specifics so that uh, you can leave this session with, okay, I'm convinced I belong to this box or I belong to that box. Uh, but before we do that, I will quickly uh, take into my own narrative uh, the four dimensions where I play as uh, a data scientist uh, who is growing as a young data scientist that is growing, that is evolving, that is trying to learn more every day. I've categorized my expertise into four domains and I will speak to each of them. Uh, and that also allowed me to also let you know some of the work we do at Data Science Nigeria, which, are in, which is an integral part of my own career. You remember when we started, a career is about platform for impact. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a platform for fulfillment. But I have to talk about Data Science Nigeria as an expression of my data science career. So I will start with data science from the point of view of business problem solver. So, for me, uh, I, like I said, I work with uh, Telco, and what I see is when you practice data science, there must be uh, a, a, an understanding that it must lead to practical proofs, you know, that truly an application of data and advanced analytics can drive business key performance indicators. We can substantiate and prove without any doubt that indeed, Data can drive incremental revenue growth by helping you understand the customer better, understand their needs, get them to buy the products more, get them to come back again and again because you understand them, or perhaps build a recommender engine that allows you to know what people buy together and use that to incentivize them to buy more, as the case may be. You must also understand that if you want to be a business uh, solution provider, you must understand the issues around cost reduction. Businesses want to reduce costs. So how can I use data to help to reduce costs? What could have been done by 10? Can it be done by two? Can I optimize my distribution so that my cost of delivery can reduce from X to Y? And therefore, the company will save this amount of money. I must understand those principles. So which means you must understand the business effectively well, and then you know how data or analytics can be situated. Now, this is to challenges of us in the business space, that you are only a data scientist to the extent that we can see the return on the investment in data. You know, some people call it return on insight. But the insight that you generate, uh, to what degree does it drive revenue growth, cost reduction, and also efficiency, doing things better. You know, how do I optimize my call center? 
Is there a better way I can use uh, the volume of call yesterday to predict the volume of call uh, the next? Or perhaps, instead of the call coming, can I anticipate who is likely to complain and have initiated an interaction? Or perhaps I can reduce the cost of my interaction based on voice call by using a chatbot. That's an efficiency solution powered by AI. In my career, I, I have served as general manager of business intelligence. I've been head of analytics and strategy at MTN, a group in South Africa. And uh, the most humbling part for me, uh, which is what each of us should seek for, is when you're able to uh, prove yourself to the extent that the use of data can win your awards. I won uh, my company, uh, you know, Yellow Star Award, for using data to conceptualize a value and risk model that led to multi-billionaire revenue growth by understanding the customer in a unique way and building a framework that the business can use based on algorithms uh, to be able to drive value creation on a sustainable basis. Um, I'll go to the second domain uh, for me, uh, which is being an hands-on professional uh, practitioner. And the implication of this is that while you work in your industry and you're a superstar, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's retail, whether it's telecoms, whether it's banking, good story. But you must build skill set beyond your current work. You remember, we're not talking about jobs, we're talking about career. You must build multi-industry capacity. And that is why I encourage everyone uh, to be on Kagu.com. Kagu.com is owned by Google. It's a global platform where all data scientists all over the world meet to work on projects. All leading companies like Amazon, uh, like Google, uh, like uh, Intel, just mention them, all top companies in the world. They bring their data for people to work on in a very competitive way. Uh, uh, so that, competitive, that competitiveness drives everyone to learn their model, to make their model better uh, because it's a ranking. Um, so the ranking pushes you. So it's actually a gamified learning. So you develop your model, you post it on Kaggle, and uh, you might be number two. Uh, maybe you just uh, uh, take a step out for five minutes and you come back from number two, you have dropped down to number 100 because thousands of other people are submitting their codes. So see yourself going down, uh, it, po it forces you to go rework your model. And of course, it has discussion board, notebooks, a data set and panel, so you can look at what other people have done, how did they do it, you can ask questions. So this allows you to play in different spaces. So it's very competitive and it helps your growth. Uh, for example, uh, even though I'm very, very busy executive, I find time to play with data outside my category, uh, from, um, uh, from image data uh, to text data to you know, geospatial data, different dimensions of data, I try to play uh, in those competitions. For example, I just I participated in Google Analytics customer revenue competition where I was in top 8%. But for me, it, it doesn't matter whether I'm in top 8 or top 10 or those that I'm actually in top 1%, like the Data Science Dojo, where I'm currently leading uh, over 1,880 data scientists all over the world. It does not really matter. What is important for me is that I can engage new set of data, I can learn from new data, I can, I can fine tune my skill and experiment new things, I can build hypothesis on those data and have fun and then compete because in competition, I define my skill, I, I, I also assure myself that I'm in the cutting edge of knowledge. Uh, if you are not yet on cargo, uh, this is one of the things uh, we celebrate a lot in Data Science Nigeria. Uh, that if you are a true data scientist, then you have to go and prove your metal where it matters. Okay. The third dimension is the area of research. Uh, it's also very important to advance knowledge, to contribute to knowledge. Uh, what doctoral research allows you to do is the discipline of learning methodologies that can allow you to advance knowledge, uh, which you can capture as a paper uh, or you can capture as a book. Or perhaps it can become a, a data product which you can patent. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can patent. You know, I have uh, a patent for a data product. Uh, I have some books that I've done, and of course, I still want to be writing more academic papers, even within my uh, executive uh, you know demands, because I believe that it's critical to my continuous self development, learning new applications and technology. 
Uh, this is my patent uh, in the US around what we call social pricing methodology uh, that use uh, calling networks uh, to be able to predict and design uh, the best price point for low income customers. Okay, uh, like I said, I've done, uh, I've put thoughts together in books. Uh, one of the most popular, which I've seen over 1 million downloads, this free book is a PDF, is Artificial Intelligence for Starters. It creates uh, 99 use cases of AI application in different industries, uh, from pharmacy to music, uh, to, bio firm, uh, to biotech, uh, to transportation, just any area. And I, and I also have uh, over 30 plus experts who also contributed to this. And of course, um, in advancing knowledge, uh, also, I'm also very keen about young people. Uh, you know, you remember I've established the need to uh, build, uh, to see AI as a nation building tool, as a platform to skill and uh, tool our nation for global competitiveness. And this must start from the early stage learning. Uh, these young people, you know, they are very curious, they've got energy, and they're very creative uh, based on the learning that I've seen uh, working with them. So and that's why I put this book together to demystify uh, the concept of AI, machine learning in a very friendly, cartoon-like manner that makes the student very excited, and also introducing them to Python code in a very fun, exciting, you know, manner, you know, so that they can start building the right skill uh, for the future. So the book is available for sale for those who are interested. Amazon, uh, Kindle, paperback, Apple iBook, uh, Google Play. It's also available on Jumia. And then we also have a special order where uh, the book can be customized with your logo. So I'm glad to say that a lot of companies buy the book in bulk and, and they put their logo. For example, the first edition, Softcom uh, the printed in thousands, and this has been distributed across the country. And we have also used it for a lot of our learning program across the country. Same for ProShare Foundation. I'm also happy to say that there are individuals who buy this book in bulk and they give it to schools, uh, public school, private schools. Uh, because if we see AI as a catalyst for what will become in the next 10, 20, 30 years, it's imperative that we start investing in the skill of the future, even among the young. So you can call this number, uh, 0906-2127, and they can discuss with you on book orders, a uh, custom edition for you, okay? Uh, like I said, um, part of being uh, a researcher is writing academic papers and presenting those papers at conferences. Uh, you know, I, I try to attend conferences. I spend my holidays to attend conferences to meet other researchers, uh, to check notes, and to, to ensure that I'm able to find the balance between uh, my theoretical uh, research and my business application as a way of advancing knowledge. Uh, just last week, uh, there was ICLR, uh, which is the biggest global machine learning conference, uh, which took place virtually. It was actually meant to take place in Ethiopia uh, for the first time in Africa, but unfortunately, uh, due to COVID-19, it had to be done online. Uh, where with my colleagues at Data Science Nigeria, Uwala and Olalekon, where we did a work on semantic enrichment of Nigerian Pidgin English, or contextual sentiment classification. So much big English, essentially what it means is that the current sentiment analyzer that we use to analyze sentiment using traditional English is, is not sufficient uh, to analyze Nigerian uh, tweets or Nigerian writing because we also use Pidgin English. So we've created those Pidgin English and this is what we call enrichment, uh, semantic enrichment so that you, know, you can do better sentiment classification effectively because it recognizes the variation between normal English and the peculiarities of Pidgin English. Uh, so, uh, so data science also includes this, uh, what we call natural language uh, processing. So I try to get involved in this work. Uh, one area that I also need to speak about in terms of my recent journey, uh, I'm trying to open you up to various areas that should catalyze your interest. I'm very keen about using AI to solve social problems. And one of the areas where I took interest, uh, this is actually a project led by our executive director of talent, who uh, says at Data Science Nigeria, uh, Mrs. Tony Adekombe, uh, who is also my wife. You know, uh, she's, an, uh, she's an educationist uh, who is an expert in understanding child psychology, 
learning delivery. Uh, so it's been our passion to say how can AI be applied in optimizing uh, classroom management. So we look at understanding the nature of the student in the class by looking, uh, especially knowing that it's difficult for a teacher uh, to be able to know what is happening in the class. So what of it we have a camera, you know, that is not, more, you know, that is not expensive, 20, 30,000, depending on context, but powered by an algorithm. And this camera can study each child with due respect uh, to the privacy of each child, uh, you know, uh, which means that they are recognized as numbers, not by name. You can study their classroom engagement. Are they raising up, are they raising up their hands? Are they sleeping uh, as, a, as a percentage of their active time in the class? When students are writing, when others are writing, is this particular child writing? I cannot count the average time this child use writing against others. So based on this, students can be better profiled based on their classroom engagement in a very dynamic way. And we can have this kind of dashboard where you know uh, we can see how engaged a child is and we can calculate that based on days of the week. And that can inform and enrich uh, you know, uh, you know, learning in a more effective way because you understand the risk. We know the engagement level by time of the day. We also know the engage, engagement level by type of subject. And of course, by the type of, by the teacher's name, you know, was this child much more excited when it was physics or less excited when it was literature? Or was he excited when it was Mr. X or when it was Mrs. Y? Of course, it makes teachers also accountable whilst also enhancing uh, the quality of learning. And based on that, we can profile all the students in the class by the engagement level on this axis and the academic performance. And based on that, we know which students should be clustered together, which students will need to change their seats so that they are better engaged, and which students will need a, you know, a more targeted intervention uh, because we've been able to properly study them and map them. This is one of the research works uh, that's been done at Data Science Nigeria. Okay, uh, one other area of research for me is in the area of financial inclusion. Uh, one of the biggest problems in financial inclusion in Nigeria is in the area of fraud. Each of us gets so many messages uh, every, you know, every day. Uh, you have won a promo, uh, your ATM is blocked, call this number, you know, very funny messages. But the pattern of those messages are consistent. The individual's phone number sending those messages are consistent. If all these messages are created and managed on the platform, Machine can learn the pattern of those things to the extent that when another person, after some time, gets another message, he or she can bring it to this platform, copy it there, and after the person copy it there, the algorithm can check, and then, you know you copy it here, and then you know you, uh, just take a screenshot and then you upload. The algorithm can study it and then tell you uh, that this that you know, this message is true or not lie. That's why we, we call this application not lie. It helps to manage financial inclusion. Uh, basically, uh, it was the second best academic poster at Deep Learning in Daba, uh, 2019, that took place in Kenya. Um, so these are things I do with various uh, teams uh, within Data Science Nigeria and our uh, industry. Uh, one other area which is very, for me is very important is in community building. It shapes my approach to data science career. Um, and it's based on my philosophy that if your vision only includes you, then it's too small. You recall uh, when we started this conversation, when we look at etymology, etymology of career, uh, we're very clear that in as much as it's about you getting your destination, uh, there must be impact. And so I see this as an expression, an extension of my career, uh, my data science career. So uh, I started Data Science Nigeria uh, 2016, uh, you know, November 2016, and we had the vision to build one million AI talent in 10 years as a way to achieve uh, all what I spoke about in the next uh, report on data wars around upscaling our nation for national competitiveness by getting young people to learn the skills that make them relevant uh, to the future or, or the future of work. So uh, as at now, uh, we've grown very speedily. Uh, we have touched hundreds of thousands via our online, offline, face-to-face, -face content development, and even job placement. Hey, Nigeria but the biggest talent pipeline, uh, pipeline for data scientists across 
all levers of industry, uh, from banking uh, to telco to consulting. We're always a touch point, even startups, you know, we're always a touch point, and we recommend talent within a large group of expertise. I need to mention that last year, uh, we were recognized as the number one AI community in Africa, uh, based on our World Core Matai Impact Award. At uh, this conference, which brings together all AI researchers and practitioners in the continent. Uh, it's a validation of the effort that we have put together in Nigeria. So we already, uh, and we've only the biggest free AI learning platform on the continent, uh, based on scale and you know, the, versatility, uh, the versatility and the types of approach we have deployed, uh, from face-to-face to online to offline, hands-on, and the various segment that we've been able to reach, from beginners to kids and teens, intermediate to university student, to professional, and even to C-level executive. Uh, these are AI every day that runs across the country. Um, we have take AI learning free of charge to every community from Zaria to Shokoto, Nola to Aba to Enugu to Abekuta, Shokoto, just you know, to, to, to Shobo, to Enugu, you know, Yanagua, to Port Harcourt, just getting knowledge everywhere, building a vibrant community of AI learners. Um, so this was AI Invasion last year. So this took place in 30 locations. So we continue to do this. This is our free learning. And we run a hub in Yaba uh, where we train uh, people on AI Monday to Friday. We actually call it uh, AI Every Day uh, where we run training. Uh, this, we also run learning clubs on campus uh, where students meet on a regular basis as a structured club to learn together, to undertake projects together, grow together, and of course, unlock opportunities within the broader data science Nigerian community. Uh, so they have opportunity to participate in a project for learning, such as why they are in school, they already have some industry experiences. So we're in 17 universities as are today. Uh, we're on 17 campuses and in 23 cities. And this is growing uh, because the team are continuing to build this platform to touch and to upscale the quality of learning that students are receiving. Uh, uh, so these are all. Uh, they run AI every day, um, learning classes for pre-university students, expert, beginners, uh, you know, uh, those who are already working and all that, okay? And then our cream de la cream, uh, peak of the park, our boot camp. Our boot camp is where the best of the best of Nigeria come together. Uh, it's uh, six to seven days, all expense paid, fully residential, learning immersion, facilitated by some of the best of the best all over the world. Last year, we had 26 international experts who flew to Nigeria to teach at this boot camp. Uh, so the attendees are students and professionals. But the, 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 the issue is getting a space here is always very intense and competitive because you have to learn a lot and then you have to prove yourself through cargo. And the best of the best after the cargo and the quiz competition are the people that come to this boot camp. Uh, last year, we had uh, Professor Thomas uh, Dietrich, um, uh, one of the fathers of AI, uh, who used to be the president of AAI, uh, the global number one association for artificial intelligence. He was in Lagos uh, to teach, to mentor, to coach. Uh, that's the kind of quality of you. And many other ones uh, from Harvard, uh, from MIT, uh, you know, top school, Stanford, uh, you know, uh, who came to teach them. And also from industry, uh, you know, like uh, you know, Facebook, uh, Google, and all that. Uh, so that a big ML, different uh, industry. And of course, a lot of our mentors who are busy in Nigeria also come to give uh, local flavor and local insight. So this is a place to dream to be and secure a seat. Of course, uh, the younger ones are always in our view through our free summer school where we train them on Python and robotics uh, to get them to start building the skills now, knowing that it's very critical to our national competition. This class is for pre-university. We think it's nice to learn machine learning before university because it enhances the quality of your application. Of course, one of the other things we've done in democratizing learning is to develop the first of its kind takeaway path that creates over 17,000 publicly available learning videos from all the top schools in the world. I'm sure many of us know uh, that most of the top schools, Stanford, Harvard, MIT, uh, they, they 
they, they cut their classes and they make these classes available. So what we've done is to painstakingly create all of these to levels, beginners, intermediate, expert, uh, based on school and based on conferences. Uh, and then we we'll put it in a USB. It's actually one terabyte now. And we, are, we distribute this free of charge across the country so that wherever you find yourself, it does not matter whether you are in Nigeria, you have access to world-class learning material to stimulate your interest to build capacity in AI. So this is the second version. This is actually a four terabyte and it contains 17,000 videos. In addition to videos, it has books, uh, PDF books that have been made publicly available and data sets that have been made publicly available for you. So that uh, the problem of internet is expensive, I do not have power, you know, it's, it's sorted. You know, and of course, this is not just for Nigeria. Uh, we've taken this to different parts of uh, Africa uh, where we give it out free of charge as part of our community uh, building. Um, so underscore the role we play as data science in, in building capacity and as a critical part of my own career building, which is the impact dimension. I just want to share with you some of the stuff that Data Science Nigeria did during this uh, national lockdown. So I'm just talking April alone as a month from April 1 at, uh, you know, till date, you know, at, you know, April 1 to 30, you know, what, data, what happened at Data Science Nigeria for you to be able to appreciate what we do. Uh, we ran a COVID-19 data science virtual conference uh, where our expert researchers uh, also engaged Dr. Elaine and Suisei uh, from Boston University uh, on emerging opportunities uh, to respond and to flatten the curve uh, and tackle the pandemic. Uh, we ran Understanding Deep Neural Network, taken by one of our uh, research interns. And then we ran five days AI uh, virtual bootcamp. Every single day we brought experts uh, from UK, US, Germany, and Mexico, learning different areas of data value chain, from analytics uh, to, prof, uh, to, to, to uh, engineering of data, uh, to process mining, you know, very intensive stuff. The videos of these classes are all available on our, on our, on our uh, YouTube page. Uh, just search for Data Science Nigeria, you can listen to them. We went through season two of the virtual bootcamp where our in-house researchers at Data Science Nigeria ran different classes from R to natural language processing uh, to convolutional neural network, and open CV, you know, different topics uh, were covered. And uh, we always go beyond the extra, we go, be, uh, we go the extra mile. We also had our in-house uh, finance and grant manager uh, who is a finance guy for data science Nigeria, but he's, all, he's also a data science enthusiast. So he facilitated a class on learning how to build financial model from scratch, combining his analytical skill and financial expertise. So this is the kind of thing. All the videos are available. And then we ran a special masterclass with Dr. Pashino, a US-based data scientist who did data science 101. So this is the kind of video that any beginner may want to look at. Uh, the videos are available. Uh, it was a step-by-step -step introduction for absolute beginner, whether you're a professional or you are a student. And of course, we ran class for students uh, in secondary schools and in primary schools. As since we know that they are home, uh, so we wanted to engage them. So we got a young data scientist uh, who is, is, is also on cargo. You know, he practices on cargo and is also well learned on cargo uh, to stimulate the young people so that they know uh, that someone of their age is also playing big uh, in the data science space. So it was able to introduce them to uh, basic Python programming. Uh, this video has seen over 20,000 views. I think it's worth uh, using it to encourage any young person uh, you know, to start their journey into artificial intelligence space. Of course, uh, we've also run competitions. Uh, since everyone is home, uh, let's excite ourselves. Let's get everybody busy. So we encourage young Nigerians to design develop logistic regression algorithm from scratch using Python and R. So this is not drag and drop. This is built from the scratch. You know, and then you know the, the winners, you know, these are the winners, you know, and they've been given uh, 45 gigabytes of data to ensure that there's they keep learning even more during this uh, lockdown. These are things we do. Of course, in addition to that, uh, we started 
uh, an initiative uh, to because we realize that a lot of our students who used to enjoy free internet on campus, Wi-Fi, or those who are working in industry as interns or core members or they are on, on, on internship, uh, they have access to free data. Now everyone is locked down, so we felt we needed to keep them engaged in learning, uh, especially those of them who have online researches to do or cloud-based tasks. So we gave out one million megabytes of data, uh, which I'm glad has touched hundreds of students and uh, researchers across the country. Um, you know, and you can see a lot of uh, things that this, the beneficiaries said about it in terms of what they did with the data that we gave to them. Some got 10 gigabytes, some got five gig, some got two gig, depending on the justification and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and your pitch or the case you present in terms of what you want to use the data for. And these are the things we do to build community. Of course, we believe that we can do more if you support us. And that is why we want to, we, we, we started this campaign to say, you can help more students, you know, uh, one gigabyte of data can make a difference in the life of a student uh, who has been locked out of the internet because of the lockdown, uh, because they're no, they no, they not in school. Uh, so you can be part of this. You can call for me on 0900 and you can support one student, five students, 10 students uh, with this free data. And in doing that, you unlock future year talent, and that's our vision. Um, in the same time, we are also working on, a, on different research work and white papers. Uh, one of the white papers we are working on is on COVID-19. The paper we have termed infodemics, uh, the epidemics of information. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the kind of misinformation, disinformation and rumor that happens in times like this can be a bigger epidemic. And that's what we're trying to analyze. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer So we're looking at all the peer-to-peer -peer messages that you receive via WhatsApp, via SMS, via Facebook Messenger, and all the channels. So we're trying to analyze them, find patterns, use natural language processing to understand the pattern and build the right construct around this, uh, you know, this knowledge space. So you can still participate in the survey uh, by clicking this link. Uh, all that is required of you is just to copy those messages from your inbox and drop it on the platform. And these messages are meant to be non-personal messages. These are generic bulk messages that people share, you know, without to convey anything around COVID-19. So we're interested. And of course, a video exists that helps to explain how this works. Okay, so we've also been busy with a lot of researchers. Um, one of the works we've been working on is uh, health location optimization, uh, understanding where is the best location uh, to deploy health intervention centers uh, to manage COVID-19, uh, whether isolation center, treatment center, test center, uh, using social vulnerability index based on geospatial data analytics. Uh, this is a project that was done by uh, some of our researchers, uh, in-house researchers at Data Science Nigeria, are uh, demonstrating the quality of skill set uh, that we parade as Data Science Nigeria uh, to add value to society. Uh, this is a social good intervention, and uh, I'm glad that this research has gone far and wide uh, to demonstrate our capacity as Data Science Nigeria. Of course, uh, COVID-19 will be part of the narrative at different level. Uh, we've done dashboard, we've done we're working on a paper that compares COVID-19 and other epidemic that happened in the past. Uh, this is already published. You can check it out. And of course, we're also part of the, uh, a lot of COVID-19 uh, epidemiological modeling committees that have been set up by different international organizations uh, to help tackle this epidemic. Uh, we, we are on board that as a Nigerian company, uh, we have raised the bar to be part of those a global uh, platform. So, data science Nigeria also solve business problems. Uh, one of the biggest tools used by data science Nigeria to solve business tool is data cloud. And the reason why I need to be as detailed as possible is also it allows you to know what can data science do. So, this is an example of a data science product. Essentially, is a geofence application to collect all forms of data at and those data are geocoded, whether it's sound, whether it's video. So essentially what Data Cloud does is I need to understand what is happening in the market. For example, is my product, what is the price of my product on the shelf? And you do not need to deploy expensive researchers to go on the street to ask that question. There are people who go to those stores every day. 
and we have built a massive network of these people across the country. So their job is they just walk to the nearest pharmacy, uh, nearest supermarket, and they just take a picture, they take the price, and they upload it. So within 24 hours, you can understand if there's price arbitrage. For example, your product is being sold higher than recommended price, or perhaps your competitor's product is sold cheaper or better, or whatever. You know, and you can analyze this by SKUs, by location, and all the data comes at your code level. So at coordinate level, you can make decisions. It might be as simple as um, as the fact maybe you are running a campaign and the campaign requires that you have some uh, in-store uh, posters and you want to be sure if those posters have been effectively deployed across the country. It might be expensive for you to send people across the country. We already have people who, are, who live in those areas. They just walk in there. They do not need any specialized skill. They just need their phone, make observation, take picture, like mixed use shopping, they upload it, the analysis is done within 24 hours, you make decisions. So, and this has multiple use cases. Track your billboard, track your team on the street, track your band aware, you know, visibility and all that. So, and we use our students to do this, which is also part of capacity building as an inclusive, robust ecosystem that we have built. So this is another application that we have that tracks daily prices of product, seasonal changes, and electricity distribution in Nigeria on daily basis. Of course, if you are in core retail business, uh, Data Science Nigeria has bespoke solution that integrates your Salesforce automation data, your retail sensors data, and help you to get your reference insight by mapping that data on other, you know, geocoded data sets so that you're able to know where your opportunity is. So issues of market development indices, market penetration analysis, uh, market opportunity analysis can be better done we are able to triangulate different data sources which the team at Data Science Nigeria, you know, do it so well. So we call it ground truth, you know, get guys to give you the ground truth. And they do it at highly micro market level. You know, they map the specific location where your product is selling, uh, either on the selling, selling above, or it's not available, or whatever is happening, they can map it for you at this level. Okay. So essentially, uh, Data Science Nigeria nonprofit uh, run consulting services are uh, for the purpose of validating uh, the capacity that the community has built, and secondly, to be able to fund all the large volume of free trainings that we run across the country. Uh, Data Science Nigeria also sponsor students to go for international conferences. Uh, we sponsor PhD research, master's research, and we invest a lot of money on local innovation research. I can look at uh, a product like Nalai. Nalai was fully funded by Data Science Nigeria uh, without any support from anywhere. And these are the ways Data Science Nigeria make money by offering consulting solutions. So if you have got number-based data, text-based data, sound-based data, picture data, video data, geospatial data, the best partner that can offer you bespoke consulting is Data Science Nigeria because we have guys who speak Datanese. I don't know if you have heard that before, Datanese, not Chinese, it's called Datanese. They speak all kinds of data language and they make sense out of it. So you've got to patronize these wonderful guys. These are some of the projects they've worked on and I'll focus only on projects that are in public domain. There are other clients that Data Science Nigeria you know, has done a lot of projects for, but they are not in public domain. So this is in public domain, you can click this. Uh, this is for financial inclusion, using geospatial data to understand the pattern of financial inclusion and financial exclusion in Nigeria. This was done uh, with, with partnership with Lagos Business School, uh, NIPS, uh, and Central Bank of Nigeria uh, using B3 uh, data. And of course, Data Science Nigeria is also doing a lot of projects uh, with Bill and Melinda Gate Foundation around data warehouse, data lake, advanced analytics. Uh, these are all available in public domain. And that is why I can freely share with you the hyperlinks uh, for you to check. Uh, so this does two things. Number one, substantiate the quality of, of capacity that Data Science Nigeria has built over the years. And more importantly, demonstrate a commitment to leverage the knowledge ecosystem to build Nigerian data scientists of the future using global best practices that is proven, that is standardized. Of course, Data Science Nigeria also provides data scientists on demand. 
so you can outsource your analytics to data science Nigeria. You don't need to bother that, oh, it's expensive to have a data scientist. Just call our team. They know how to do it for you. They will help look at the data, guide you through the process, and manage it for you end-to-end, -end, give you the kind of insight you require for business decision-making. And then we offer what we call data scientist recruitment as a service. It's part of the support system that Data Science Nigeria offer to Nigerian businesses. And the reason is simple. There are too many uh, pretenders out there. You know, somebody who just went for a one-week training or somebody who, uh, you know, does only, you know, basic you know, analysis and uh, I'm a data scientist, you know, we like to throw buzzwords, you know, like I've said initially in this presentation, we throw buzzwords and we use that to intimidate people because we know that maybe the people that will filter the CV and they see those buzzwords, logistic regression, you know, a principal component analysis, you know, discriminant analysis, or they'll just pick your CV. We have known over the years that claim on CV, as far as data is concerned, is different from reality. So you need an expert to help you filter, you know, through the jungles and help you find the right talent through our rigorous, hands-on, project-based, you know, selection process. And when we are done with that, we also support the talent on board into your organization through our global network of mentors who are experts in the industry where we are recruiting for, and they will support the person to onboard. And we have done this for companies already, so uh, so we have, uh, data science has proven itself in this area. So if you're interested, uh, you can email Sheon Olua Sheon at data science Nigeria dot AI or call the number uh, on the screen uh, so that you are not uh, you are not buzzworded and you can filter between the fake and the original and get the right talent. And for us, we also believe that this is uh, one of our responsibility to the industry and to be able to preserve uh, the quality of value or premium place on the young talents that we're developing. Because if certain scammers have gone ahead to present themselves as data scientists and they've been tried and tested and they have failed the companies, then companies may be tempted to start having a long impression that all the guys who call, them, who call themselves data scientists are fake. They are, they, are, they, are, they are all deceivers. They are scammers. They are scams. And that's why we have taken on this responsibility uh, to help companies recruit high-quality data scientists uh, so that uh, we preserve the future for the talent that we raise in Nigeria so that they can trust our local talent uh, so that they are not uh, carried away. Okay, good. And of course, I must not forget the fact that we run some of the best professional trainings and these ones are paid and I have explained why we do this. Uh, data Science Nigeria run massive network of, of, of capacity building across the country. We have full-time dedicated staff who manage all these free trainings uh, all the campus network that we have, we have full-time staff who are managing those things, uh, even in the non-profit. So it becomes important that we must find other ways to raise funds to be able to get those things done. So that's why we do this. And we've been privileged to train some of the leading companies in Nigeria, uh, from shells of this world to FCMB to uh, IHS to a lot of companies of different calibers uh, that we have been privileged to train. We, 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 we consider it a privilege that we have contributed capacity building in the middle layer uh, management cadre uh, for many companies in Nigeria. And we seek to do more because for us it's beyond uh, training for money. Uh, we demonstrate commitment even to the students that even after the training, we're still giving training virtually, inviting them to virtual classes, uh, monitoring their growth uh, because we believe uh, that if they are properly trained as data scientists, they can push our vision to raise one million AI talent 10 years by becoming a mentor, by opening up new opportunity for our students to be able to come to their company to work. Uh, so this means a lot to us. So for us, it's beyond training. It's actually nation building. That's the way we have said it. And of course, we run um, a uh, executive level engagement. We are CEOs of companies, uh, executive directors, finance directors, marketing directors, top level, C level. Uh, are gathered together and we bring global experts and we demystify the old concept of uh, data science and how it relates to business. So this is business level conversation, uh, you know, linking into data, data science 101. Uh, for example, last year, uh, one of our instructors here, uh, standing here 
uh, is Dr. Emmanuel Doro. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Doro is a chief data scientist for Walmart US. And for those who know, that's the biggest uh, retail uh, brick and mortar in the world. Uh, so he leads their data science. Uh, there's no better person to demystify this than someone of his caliber. And then for this event, we had five other speakers who also flew to the country uh, to add to the narrative. These are the kind of things we do. Because these are cream, like cream, middle level professional training where we support middle level managers, learn business analytics in a way that combines the theory of, AI, of, of data science and the practical application with a rich business mindset. So the guys who teach here are not your ID that I come to teach. These are guys who do data science at executive level. I'm also privileged to teach in this class because it runs on a Saturday. And then we have other experts who come. Because for us, it's not just teaching for money. This is teaching to scale up our country for global competitiveness. So the students learn the theory of modeling. They learn the practice of modeling with big amount. They learn sentiment analysis. They learn, uh, they learn data visualization with Microsoft Power BI. And then they learn projects, hands on. People are grouped to work on projects. And it's exciting that uh, as soon as you are done with a training like this, you are ready to apply it at work almost immediately. And for us, it's beyond the training. We also push them to ensure that they move to the next level of continuous uh, capacity building. I recall the last quote that we had in March. Some of the benef uh, participants have already moved to cargo. They're already solving problems outside their industry space. So uh, you might need to check out this website where you will see the list of all the trainings that Data Science Nigeria offers as a way to build capacity of our country. And if we build capacity of staff, we of course indirectly increase productivity. And when we increase productivity, we increase gross, uh, gross domestic product. And indirectly, we are adding to our national value. So we are very clear about the logic of how this link up together. And that's why we're very passionate about what we do as a way of giving back. Just for you to understand the types of training that Data Science Nigeria offers, they actually categorize into four. The first category is, uh, the first category is certification-based training. Data Science Nigeria can partner with you uh, to go for certification. Uh, there's a certification by Columbia University, Data Science for Executives. It's a professional class. You can be part of that class. Or Microsoft Certified Azure Data Scientist Associate I uh, will train you, and then you go write the examination, and of course, you have the certificate like this. This is the Columbia X, uh, Columbia uh, Business School's uh, University's professional certification. You can actually have your name written here by just being part of this class, uh, because we'll train you so that you can go and write these exams, uh, this examination, and become certified. Of course, we also have what we call industry specialty-based trainings. And these also come with consulting. So for example, a company is interested in developing the data science skill of the marketing staff. A team of experts will train the marketing team, but while training them, they will use the company data to train them and they will deliver a project with the team during the training. And that's what we call the data science for marketing plus in-house consulting. Is a, is a full bouquet so that it's not just theory. At the end of the day, the HR can actually measure the return on that training, that the problem was solved using that training. We believe that this kind of approach to training allows staff to be able to immediately apply the skill and also make them accountable that the company has spent money for you to solve this specific problem. Of course, the same thing is done for data, for HR and people analytics, same thing for banking, fintech, insurance. We come in, we train, and we solve a problem. And solving the problem is actually providing mentoring and guidance to your staff such that as they're learning, they're learning logistic regression, they're applying it to help you build loan default model using your local data. And they can experiment with it and you can see whether it works or not. Of course, we also have a master class on project monitoring and evaluation for nonprofits. This also includes in-house and then digital transformation. Now, we all know that everybody must go digital, but there's a, a pathway to going uh, digital. There are fundamental pillars of consideration from process to people, 
platforms, this training helps you understand those milestones whilst also offering you in-house consulting to make that happen. And then we have the general analytics training, business analytics masterclass, data visualization for beginners, social media sentiment analysis for marketing, data mining with R, or even mastering SQL databases. So these are general training. And then we have the advanced one, a deep learning masterclass, robotic process automation, and data engineering. There's so many options to have. You know, uh, and if you are able to choose a path of your career after this session, uh, you might consider any of this. And our team at Data Science Nigeria will be very, very glad to help you do this. And I say it again, why Data Science Nigeria? There are so many people that offer trainings. And one thing uh, that differentiates Data Science Nigeria is the quality of learning. You know, uh, these we, you know, uh, 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 people teaching bring to the table world-class expertise. And this is an expertise that has been proven again and again and again at local and international level. Number two, there is a vision driving uh, the class uh, to the extent that we teach you so that you can become an agent of AI for national development, that wherever you find yourself, you apply to drive productivity, so there's that bigger drive. And third, is the fact that whatsoever we make from this training is used and invested in this young Nigerian students across the country that will train, that will mentor, that will fund to attend international conferences, that will fund their researches, fund their PhD research work, develop research work in our quest uh, to raise one million AI talents, drive employability, drive research, drive social impact, to make Nigeria a center of excellence for impact. I'm sure you would like to try us, if just for that. So I think to close this session, you might need to watch, uh, you might just need to check out and listen uh, to the testimonials of the past attendees of our paid training. I'm sure it will inspire you to make a decision and to follow your path if you find it today. Okay, let's listen to them. Okay, so I chose data science because, I mean, it's the future. The vision of DSN, I identify with it. I mean, it's something I can relate with, the vision of wanting to create um, a hub for data scientists in West Africa. I mean, it's something that is highly needed. Okay, so far so good has been a wonderful one. I was able to learn um, the use of data to interpret data to predict the future, definitely. My big take home is probably um, sentiment analysis and then um, the use of big ML. Today we did data visualization, dealt extensively with um, Power BI. There's a whole lot I can do with it. Things that we've been trying to analyze, I can now visualize it and it will make more sense to my audience. Big ML majorly, it has been my own major takeaway and the, the lectures were so broken down such that anybody can understand it. What um, Sharon told me is lesser than what I even experienced the, um, the facilitators. They took us like children. It was like a dummy taking the course. Tell everybody I, I, I come in contact with, especially young people in school right now, jobs as we know it will no longer exist. So you should get trained you know, in one of the technical skills. It could be data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. That is the future. So for me, DSN, the vision, is something that everyone, every forward-looking Nigerian should identify with. Okay, so having spent a lot of time speaking to my own personal journey, uh, you know, as a data scientist, uh, from business application where I work, uh, from a practitioner, from cargo expertise, as a researcher, uh, from paper writing, book writing, patent development, and contributing to capacity building, and then the fourth one, which is career that is focused on, you know, continuous impact 
uh, in terms of building community through Data Science Nigeria and the various layers of, of how we have developed data science, data science Nigeria construct on a sustainable path for making an impact in the country. So we're not going to begin to bring everything together so that uh, you, know, you can begin to make decisions. Uh, uh, so I'm going to look at evidence-based facts on data science AI career path, uh, which is aimed to help you uh, to make the right decision uh, on where you belong and how you can take the journey to the next level. Okay, let's go. So, one point uh, from uh, this Harvard Business Review of uh, February 2018 is the fact that you don't have to be a data scientist to fill many analytical roles. There are so many, many, many analytical roles uh, that requires different skill sets. So, we just need to see the options. Um, so, to see the options, I uh, relied on this uh, research work that was done. Um, uh, and published as, a, as an e-book, Analyzing the Analyzers, an introspective survey of data scientists and their work. And you can see the link here, so you can go check it up after now to be able to understand this. Uh, the theory, the approach, the methodology used to gather the data is here. Uh, so this is meant to help you to know where you actually fit. So based on this work, which helps us to bring together the five framework that I shared initially, I talked about the, the McKinsey framework, speak to uh, business, technology, and analytics, uh, PwC that speak to analytics, uh, uh, so, uh, enable job and data science job based on skill or the academic construct that essentially look at prescriptive and predictive, you know, based on all those things that I've shared, where do I fit? So I'm going to use this to summarize and bring it all together so that you can leave this seminar workshop uh, with a clarity that this is my path, and like a chariot, I'm going to give you the momentum, the energy, the force, stay on that path, and make sure I get to my destination. So based on this very inspiring work, in addition to other references, which I would advise you to see, there are three of them here, it was able to look at critical drivers of skill set in data science space. You, business skill or domain knowledge, that's number one. Machine learning and big data skill. Mathematics skill. Programming skill and statistics skill. So these are distributed, you know, in different levels of variation across uh, four categories. Sorry about that. Across four categories. Uh, category one, data business person. Category two, data creative. Category three, data developer. And the last one, data researchers. So if I pick the data business person, you see the biggest box in this area, the biggest box is the business area. So these are guys who are focused on the organization and how data project yield profit and solve business problems. Uh, they are the business analysts, functional analysts, visualizers, and they, their focus is basic interpretation of business issues, uh, you know, everyday data analysis, operational data analysis, basically. But beyond understanding the business, because they must be able to contextualize their insight, they must have some level of data manipulation skill and some machine learning skill, a little bit of math, a very small portion of programming skill, because all that they may need is what we call drag and drop. I will speak to that. And then they must have some general statistics skill. At least they must understand mean, media, mode, uh, what is p-value, what is r squared. Uh, they must understand kutosis, bar chart, things that allow them to make informed decisions, especially uh, if I'm going to test the quality of my model, uh, my accuracy, my precision, my report, and my need to understand the fundamental principles. And then we have the second category called the data creative. If you look at the data creative, the biggest box is green, which is machine learning. And uh, the second biggest one is statistics, but it also requires a lot of programming. So these guys are the creative ones. So what does that mean? They are the ones that tackle the boats and not of analytic process. Uh, they, are, they are creative with data. They can combine a guiding framework tools to make informed decision from extracting data to integrating to layering it, to performing statistical and advanced analytics, uh, to making compelling visualizations and then making interpretations. You know, these guys 
uh, work very strongly on that. And they build tools to make analysis scalable and broadly applicable. So these guys are the creating ones. Uh, a lot of data scientists uh, tend to play in this space where you are able to combine, you know, a, a proportionate, you know, knowledge across various spectrums. So essentially what they do is that they combine machine learning and statistics using programming capacity. So they bridge the gap. So these guys are very hands-on. They are very, very hands-on. And then the third category are the data developer. Just as it sounds, this appears very clearly like the back-end technical problem solvers. I will manage the data on this platform. They manage the pipeline. They know how to get it. They know how to store it. And they know how to learn from it. So things like data warehouse, uh, data lake, and all those kind of things are done at this level. And the skill set is all encompassing. Uh, they, need my, uh, they need machine learning skill. Uh, it's very, very important so that they're able to build the right algorithm. They need uh, some mathematics uh, because they're going to you know, make some informed decisions and assumptions and optimization. They also require programming skill because these are the guys that will use structural query language, for example, query data. And they, may need, they also need some little statistics, but it's not as much as the other ones. So these are the guys that require least statistics, you know, because... Uh, these guys are hands-on. They just want to make data available when you need it. And the last category is data researchers. Uh, you can see uh, it dispor it's, it's disproportionately bigger on this red box, and you can guess this one, is statistics. These are every user of statistics. And you can see mathematics is also very, very big because these guys are research-oriented users, whether in the industry or in academic research and the advanced theoretical concepts and application. Uh, these guys find new domains of exploration, they open new frontier of learning by focusing on gaps, uh, they build on existing knowledge, uh, they disrupt existing protocols, they experiment uh, with multi-level hypotheses. So even in big companies, they are called research scientists. You know, I have quite a lot of them as friends in Google and Facebook. In big companies like Microsoft, IBM, and most of them, they are PhD because they are raw material is statistics and mathematics, and they combine it with a little of everything uh, to be able to advance knowledge and uh, to be able to understand complex processes. Uh, so they leverage scientific principles and uh, to engage uh, business issues, and they undertake a lot of academic uh, academic uh, researches. So these guys work in the industry. You know, they drive new frontier. So with this story, I want to believe that to a large extent you should be asking yourself, where do I fit? Where do I see myself? Am I a data business person? Am I a data creator? Am I a data developer? Am I a data researcher? Interestingly, this research went further to do another classification. From the four generic archetypes, there are also 11 sub-archetypes based on the four dimensions. Based on these four dimensions, there are sub-levels. So if you're a data developer, can be a developer or an engineer, depending, depending on the levels of expression of these uh, combinations. Data researchers can also be at three levels. You can be a researcher, you can be a scientist, you can be a statistician, depending on levels of involvement. And data creative, you can be jack of all trades, you can be an artist, you can be a hacker. You remember jack of all trades also came out uh, from the work of uh, Professor Kim at UCLA uh, when he, he analyzed about 800 uh, Microsoft staff to understand uh, this group. This jack of all trade can do everything uh, from data query, machine learning, they can do everything. And of course, there are data business persons, uh, which is also subcategorized. So you are either a, a, a data leader or a business person or even an, an entrepreneur. So, which means I can translate this my data to actually build a new business. So, I can set up a fintech using data knowledge, I can set up uh, a medical business using AI, so the opportunities are, limit, are limitless. So I want to encourage you uh, to check this link so that you're able to situate yourself. So as I round up, how do I start? Um, so we're going to be rounding up now. How do I become a data scientist is a question people ask. Uh, this is my Google screen. Uh, how do I become a data scientist from scratch? How do I become data scientist in Nigeria? And then you can see this, how do I become a data scientist without a degree? So they're different, different folks, different questions. You need to audit your skill set and be clear on what you can do and what you cannot do. And to what degree can you stretch yourself? Be very sincere to yourself 
And at the end of the day, look at all the options available to you. Am I a business person? But how far do I even want to go in that space? Is it as an entrepreneur? Is it as a business leader? Is it as a business analyst? What level do I see myself? And how do I want to you know, articulate in the next one year, I want to have added programming skill. In the next two years, I want to have added a statistical skill. In the next four years, I want to have added mathematical skill. If you are very clear about that part, then you can set for yourself a developmental agenda that become your own personal roadmap, which you are following. This has nothing to do with whether that company sends you on training or not. That is for the company. But for yourself, you have your own master plan. You are following your master plan of development because you are very clear about your path, like a chariot, you remember the root meaning of career, and you stay on that path with clarity and you build yourself. The last point I must make here is the values. Make sure that what you do aligns with your values, aligns with what excites you, your passion, your reason for living. It just makes this whole thing more fulfilling for you and just make it go beyond money and gives you the comfort to navigate through the tough terrain of learning data science, AI, or whatever options you have chosen in all the options you have discussed. And I need to mention that you must not be deceived by the hypes. Know exactly what you want. There are no shortcuts. Forget all this learn AI in six days, learn AI in this. It takes time. I've been practicing this. Uh, I started uh, practicing SaaS Enterprise Miner. Uh, when I, I went into data mining 16 years ago, I am still learning. I'm still a, 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 I'm still a learning data scientist. I'm still growing. You know, so don't let anybody deceive you. There's no fast lane. You must painstakingly learn. Get the right skill, no matter what it's going to take. Uh, don't use you know small thing to you know to 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 patch your path greatness. Uh, we always say a shortcut will cut you short. Uh, you must build solid foundation. If you need to learn maths, go learn it. If you need to learn statistics, go learn it. Don't let anybody deceive you. And that's what we do well at Data Science Nigeria when you come to our training. Uh, because it's not a business uh, gizmo. We're not doing it. For, we're building the nation. We're building our future. We don't allow these entrepreneurial deceptions into all these creating trainings that do not take anybody beyond the certificate that is just used to deceive others, but they have not built the skill set. So, don't let anybody mislead you. Build what it takes to compete, what it takes to go the extra mile. So, be clear on your path. So these are my conclusions. Uh, I believe, based on everything I've shared with you, that I've been saying uh, the nine dimensions of personality, uh, the three dimension for McKinsey, two dimension for academics, uh, four dimensions for analyzing the analyzer, we may safely conclude that there are two broad areas, you know, broad areas, there will be sub areas, but two broad areas, either ML application, machine learning application and research box together. So this would mean data creative and data researchers box together. And then we have the other one, which is the, uh, the, the business users, uh, the data uh, business person, and of course, uh, uh, the data developers, you know, uh, we all, the data developers will, inter will, will be within the two, but it will be more for the business users. But of course, this is not uh, a, a well delineated uh, mapping, but just an attempt to over summarize uh, what is essentially very complex. So uh, it's just an attempt to summarize. So if I pick machine learning application and research, if you want to play in this space, I encourage you to go for solid mathematics and domain knowledge as a starting point. You want to be willing to build your math skill. You know, as you grow in data and machine learning, you require that you need maths. You know, uh, your linear algebra, uh, you need it, matrices, vectors, matrix uh, operation, you need it. Uh, probability uh, theory, you will need it. Uh, random variables, you know, uh, distributions, sampling method, you need that. Uh, motivated calculus, you will definitely need it. Uh, differential calculus and all that. You know, let me pick an example. Uh, in back propagation in deep learning, for example, it's all about understanding how changing the weights and biases in a neural network changes the cost function. Essentially, what you are doing is partial derivatives. I'm sure you remember your chain rules or those who did calculus. So you need those knowledge. So don't let anybody deceive you. You need to go and dust those knowledge or get people who can help you uh, to get those skills uh, if that is a path that you have chosen. Of course, 
um, you need programming skill if you want to function in this area. Uh, in Data Science Nigeria, we encourage Python and R, and we push these two proactively, and we have also introduced it to young folks early enough. So you, and then as you have done that, you also scale up uh, into SQL, of course, errors, TensorFlow, and other adaptations uh, that allows you uh, to be able to manipulate uh, various data types. Of course, solid statistical mastery is very, very critical. You know, uh, we cannot uh, joke with this. You must be solid in statistics. You must be solid. And then I always say know everything about something. You know, so you must pick a domain that you know everything. So like mine is computational, computational social science. So I like to read all papers, you know, I try to read papers on a regular basis from archive in my area of specialization, while I try to know every other thing, but this area, you know, social theory, social network analytics, case studies of big data, in social media analysis, I'm interested because it's my domain. So I want to know everything about something. Then the master of communicating your data to experts, to developers. Uh, you must be a master at communicating your data to experts. So when you're communicating data to experts, you're using your mathematical notations which you cannot use when you are con uh, communicating to ordinary users. When you are presenting your papers among PhD communities, it's all mathematical uh, mathematical notations. That's what you're using. When you're talking about developers, give me your GitHub. I want to see your codes. When you're talking about ordinary users, you are talking in the language that my, my grandma can understand, that they are saying that if you do five things, 10 will come. If you do 10 things, 20 will come. And of course, Progress to write academic papers. Let people critique the papers. Read at least five papers a month because it helps you to burden your horizon. Uh, review papers, reflect on papers, and make it to international conferences. Whether I know New Leaves is the biggest, uh, uh, ICLR is one of the, you know, New Leaves and ICLR are the biggest in the world. Deep in Dapa is the biggest in Africa. And of course, make it to Data Science Nigeria Bootcamp because we also do posters there. You know, so this for me would be a clear path for an ML application related one. So you can say which one is my year one agenda, my six month agenda, my 18 month agenda, 24 month, 36 month. Don't rush it, follow your path. And then for business users, you must have a business broad mastery of the business because domain knowledge is very key for you. Because your strength is that you understand uh, the business problem, so you can bring in uh, data, so you're like uh, uh, the analytics translator, so you must play your, your role very well. I'm sure you remember the McKinsey uh, framework. And then you must be familiar with drag and drop tools. I will speak a lot to that. These are tools that do not require you to learn uh, programming language. So you just uh, bring your data from an external environment, uh, whether in Excel, or you know, uh, or CSV or whatever format it is, and then you just pick uh, buttons. I want to analyze this. Uh, what are the you know what are the conditions guiding this? And you click them. And but you must have a general understanding of statistical principle so that you can make informed decision on whatever the outcome is. Uh, because even if the machine helps you to do automated uh, machine learning and you do not understand the meaning of the result, and that's why you must understand. Uh, those key uh, statistical principles, uh, you know, what does it mean, you know, that this is this. Of course, know something about everything. You don't need to know everything about something, but know something about everything. So when people are talking about reinforcement learning, you know what it means, generically. When you talk about uh, market basket analysis, you know what it means. When you talk about deep learning, you know what it means. When you talk about CNN, RNN, you know, uh, like so on, when people are saying, oh, I'm learning CNN, so is that uh, uh, CNN uh, cable news? But no, convolutional neural network. So you need to know those things. So that people will not use both words uh, to boss you away. So you need to understand those general uh, definitions. You don't need to know how to use them, why they apply, but you, when people are talking about them, you have a general appreciation of what is being said. Of course, the master at communicating data in numbers and in visuals is perhaps the strongest strength of business users. You can communicate data in numbers uh, because you have solid statistical skill and then you have visualization skills. So Power BI is very, very clear. Or any other visualization skill, 
uh, or two that are available in all the open source systems. Of course, Tableau is also another option. Uh, and of course, attend business analytics conferences, listen to other people, read use cases. Uh, you may not read papers, but read use cases. Of course, read books. There are a lot of books that simplify a lot of this concept, and there are a lot of them. Uh, if you go on Amazon, uh, even in our AI hub in Yaba, we have uh, you know, uh, data science for dummies, uh, data science for beginners, uh, that you can go and, of course, uh, check up or buy your own. Uh, watch online conferences. Uh, you may not know what they are talking about, it might be complex, but it gives you general appreciation of what is being discussed and participate in learning opportunities. Uh, one of the things we are going to be starting in Data Science Nigeria is the opportunity for our community members to volunteer and be part of projects as part of their development. So we publicize all the projects we are working on. Oh, we're building this model, we're building that model. Are you interested? And then you can virtually join uh, two hours a week, one hour a week. It's part of our strategy uh, to upscaling middle level uh, expertise in Nigeria. Uh, to drive productivity, whilst also using it to bring a lot of our students while in school uh, to start building an uh, industry where this skill set. Uh, join Kagu and practice again and again. I've spoken about this. I cannot emphasize how this helps you catalyze your career. It pushes you. Uh, it makes uh, competition as a way of helping us get better. It doesn't matter where you fall on the leaderboard. What is important is you are learning, you are competing. Uh, you are learning from other industry. You are learning from other experts. Uh, you are positioning your skill set on a global platform. Don't be a local champion. Don't be the best data scientist in Africa or in, or in Lagos or in Abeokuta. Be one of the best data scientists in the world. And that is the vision we set for ourselves at Data Science Nigeria. We either play at the global space or we don't play at all. And that is why we push our students uh, to, 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 to be able to operate at this level as part of their capacity uh, building. So we also have another cargo called Zindi. Uh, Zindi is African-based type of cargo. Uh, you can visit www.zindi.africa. Uh, we are very proud of what they are doing. We also have done a lot of projects on Zindi, a platform at Zia Science Nigeria, and a lot of Nigerian students and professionals are also running projects there. Uh, join a learning community. Uh, it helps you to grow very fast. There are so many in Africa, we are part of them. So we encourage you to join any of this learning community. It helps your growth. And then you can join our learning community at Data Science Nigeria. You can join our AI Plus clubs on campus. You can also join our AI Plus community. Comes with a lot of benefits. Uh, so we uh, support them like the data gifting that we did was for our AI Plus community members. Uh, we support them with internship opportunity uh, when there are grants and when there are companies. I'm looking for talent. Uh, this is a community where we pull people from. Why? Because we know that you have been learning. We know that you have been growing. We know that you have been supporting. And more importantly, we know who you are because in becoming an AI Plus member, you must provide some data and also a, a referee. Uh, because a lot of students that we have not met before, we have referred them to companies to do six-month internship. Uh, we've done that for many students. And we only do that if you are an AI Plus member because it makes us feel very comfortable because we are sending you to companies where we stake our, 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 our relational equity that we have built over the years. So this might be very good for your growth. Uh, for business people, uh, don't forget this website, uh, www.datasciencenigeria.org slash new training. You can't forget it. And you see all the four classes of trainings I've spoken about. Uh, pick the one that you think you are ready for. Or send us email. I'll be very ready to support your growth. Of course, at Data Science Nigeria, like you can see, uh, this is not uh, an entrepreneurial flash in the pan trying to make money. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is about a deliberate commitment uh, to adding value to our nation, and that is why we feel very privileged to have been able to attract some of the best experts in the world uh, in our advisory board and in our mentorship uh, pool. Uh, from different parts of the world. And that enhances the quality of our outcome. Uh, people will check our curriculum. Uh, people will check our, and, and we publish annual reports, you know, which you can check, Data Science Nigeria annual report, where every single fund, every single money that is made uh, is, is explained and what is used, used for. So this keeps us very accountable and helps us to deliver our mandate to raise one million AI talents in 10 years. 
and make a huge difference in making our country the new center of AI excellence in a few years to come as we collectively add value. I believe this will be useful to you, but I will close with this image that the best project you will ever work on from today's view have exposed us to possibilities in you know, finding a path in, in, in data science uh, and finding your own space. It's about your career. And if you want to go for this, of course, you need to continue to work on yourself, shaping yourself to size, building, you know, analytical muscles, you know, shaping up time-wasting things that has not added to you, investing time in building the right skill set. Uh, the statistics that you did last in university, you have to go back to it. Uh, the mathematics that you struggle to pass, if you have chosen to be a researcher, you might need to go back to it. The best project you ever work on is yourself. Uh, choosing yourself to size, cut off excesses, cut off waste, be focused, be deliberate, be very intentional. The future is waiting for you. And when you'll be able to get there, you will have much many lives. And you will have been part of this great dream of making our country great by building, not just our country, making Africa great by helping to allow the cycle of excellence uh, to continue. So we are Data Science Nigeria. Um, um, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, you can read more about us. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, send email, uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we tweet every day. We review academic papers every day. Uh, our trainings, our events are always there. Instagram, follow us, Facebook, YouTube. Go to our YouTube page, there are a lot of past learning materials, including our 100 days of machine learning is there free of charge. That's our phone number. You can call us anytime. And of course, for our reports, our milestones, our annual reports, our key developmental milestones, everything we've done, our sponsors, our, support, our companies have supported us. You can go through that link and you know about us. So thanks so much for being part of this session. Uh, as a green data scientist, I want to challenge you to go this path sure to be a very fulfilling one for you. Thanks for joining us and do have a blessed day.